chapters nineteen twenty and twenty one of sri krishna the lord of love by baba Prihanand bharati this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter nineteen thus spring ripened into summer and autumn and again the rolling seasons touched upon the heels of one another and krishna grew into greater beauty with each season of his earthly career more and more the people of brindaban became absorbed in him the young and old those near and far looked upon him as one without whom they could not exist and so it was the complete whole was he of whom they were but parts and ever were they reaching to again find the heart out of which they had sprung his smile was to them the sun that warmed his words the flowers which filled them with joy his deeds the fruits which satisfied the hunger of their hearts the very quick of their lives he was and nothing lived breathed bloomed or grew in brindaban from the people to the cattle creeping things and all that grew that did not draw life from the lord that dwelt as youth among them and the milkmaids who in loving companionship oft with him roamed to the hillside where with the other boys he tended the cattle would in fond love contemplate the youth knowing not what the potency was that drew them forgetful of all duties to his side and among themselves they would speak thus oh how sweet is the hillside when krishna is near how sublime is his countenance and his eyes how beautiful with piercing love light filled serene doth he stand yet bewilderingly entrancing is the joy that comes to our souls by his glances that seek us in softness and kindness was aught as beautiful they were wont to say as our krishna clothed in blue and gold with the crown of peacock feathers on his brow and a garland of fresh flowers festooned from his shoulders why is it that flowers that girdle him thus never fade or wither or die but deeper their colours and stronger their petals and sweeter their fragrance are when in contact with him they have come and the fields where he walketh see how they smile and give their treasures in greater abundance and the rivers close by they rise high on our land as if to dwell longer on our banks because our krishna is here at the notes of his flute all exquisite whose potent spell must charm all the living see how his cattle do greet him and tremble and thrill at the sound of the music and even the untamed things of the forest with wistful look and nostrils spread unbidden and unafraid do stand on the crest of the hill as if drawn and subdued by the influence of his love sound oh the sound of his flute is proof against the iron-moulded mind and can soothe the very giant of fierceness into gentleness by its sweetness checked as every fear and rebellion is laid low in every heart and a kingdom of love every home becomes wherein that sound hath pierced oft times it seemeth that time itself doth suit its step to keep pace with its rhythm for note ye not how the sun doth stand loath to move lest the sight and sound it loseth oh why are we not the flute he holds to his lips blessed beyond all things it is for his kisses it receives and drinks the nectar of his love to its fill what wonder that it joys to give the sound forth that his breath doth make or why are we not the trees under which he sitteth and whose branches he counteth with happy gaze or even the grass where he 
reclining that hath the dear privilege to caress his sweet body in lowly love but we can only look on his face and die with longing when from him we go thus spake the maids but their tongues could not tell what bliss overflowed the heart welling up with love for him who wakened in every heart the love that was all divine from the babe's first smile to the man who looked first on the glorious earth and then to the arched sky and then in his heart and found there a sum of love that was all bliss in krishna the youth who played the flute in the forest by night on the hillside by day in him who charmed all that was they beheld the fullness of love he gave them and received all bliss he was the spring of love that had the more for the giving he satisfied the most when many did draw from his well spring to the heart of all mothers he came as a child and in tenderness and joy they caressed him as such like a flower dropped untouched from heaven they held him the men he approached as a friend and a son and gave and received the love that they craved and felt the servant too he met in the way he sought to be known and by him he was served and did serve thus to all he gave what they craved to have unstinted unfettered he was in the giving and none was there in all that land that sought and could not find what their hearts did seek and to the maids who opened their pure young hearts for the all-enduring mysterious love he gave of his inexhaustible source the sweet touch that harmonized all things and made the heaven and earth to meet all kindred were they for he was their parent and their love was but part of his holy flame and with the light from that flame there awakened within them that which knew but love which was but love and krishna it was who filled all their being and outward consciousness to them was lost hail to thy maiden love o gopi thy love the triumph of man and god the crown of time's blessedness it was o climax of happiness complete chapter twenty when the days of fasting came the gopis as the scriptures commanded began their worship by taking their baths in the sacred river jamna o oh, happy waves more holy made by the maids who stood in prayers in thy beds and threw on thy bosom the sweetest flowers that grew where krishna's feet had fallen thus they worshipped each day for a month in the early morn ere the sun was seen singing on their way the songs of love and praise for krishna who was the first and the last and middle of all their day one morning while sporting and singing in the clear cooling waters they beheld on the limbs of a tree close by the youth krishna enthroned in its branches and holding their wearing apparel in his hands crowned as usual with flowers was he but a look all majestic was in his eye affrighted with shame they begged for their garments but krishna replied come and get your garments either in a body or singly o damsels and salute to the sun shining over my head as near you approach for a moment they hesitated then that which as a shadow had crossed their heart and is known as shame departed from them and saluting forward they came in a body led by radha the loveliest and chiefest of the milkmaids and dripping and lovely before him they stood completely they had surrendered their human will to the will of him who was divinity selfless unyoked from all that was worldly before him they stood uncovered and free as they came from his heart again on that heart they gazed unashamed for their souls were not covered with vice or with piety or even with virtue but were bare as the love upon which they looked they received the garments that he for them had he krishna the source of pure love was and his garments to them were spiritual purity and clothing themselves with the clothes of his giving they joyfully went to the homes of their fathers while krishna surveying his world was enthroned in his kingdom of love and as the gopis came to the feet of him who was the author of all love so all must come empty and free from all earthly desires to accept that love for love's sake for naught cared the gopis but krishna desiring naught else beside so only can love absolute be gained in absolute self-surrender 
he who would have that love that is its own enjoyment that love that a universe unto itself is doth not find it easy to obtain it by merit or piety or even the fruition of highest spirituality the bounds of all spirituality it must pass to become the absolute and causeless love where spirituality ends there causeless love doth begin all love that hath the cause is of earth love that hath even a high spiritual cause is limited in scope and such love may vanish when its cause is removed but the love that is causeless all enduring is it fadeth not neither doth it pass away but by day and by night and throughout all time it waketh and accumulateth ever for it is the love absolute from the souls of the gopis the last trace of heaven and earth have vanished and being resplendent with the glory of this love absolute of the love that was unto itself substance and satisfaction was the causeless cause for this gift of all gifts from the hand of him who alone could bestow it and alone was that love itself chapter twenty one the summer sun beat down fiercely upon the gopas and the cattle when krishna turned to them saying see the wonder of these trees kind beyond expression are they they ask for naught but what the earth sky and sun the night and day give unto them yet in all royalty they grow and give shade unto us and unto all that wish to partake of their shade their fruits also do they give and their bark and leaves and juices to all who desire it so should man also be but few are there among men that live but to bestow blessings upon others yet unto you i say o my loved companions only unto them that give of their abundance to all that come within their radius unto them alone is life a blessing and not a curse all men are placed here not of their own free will not yet unto themselves but by the will of love and for others and only as the law of give and take is set in operation among men is man living a natural life oft times doth the man wonder why he is unto himself a huge perplexity it is only when he forgets his relationship to all mankind that his life a riddle is and this being so he comprehendeth not the maker of himself nor the universe and failing to do so how can he know life aright after sporting among themselves the boys spoke to krishna saying o krishna a hungered are we where or oh, where shall we find food canst thou not assist us and krishna answered them saying go thou yonder where many brahmins are performing religious ceremonies go to them and in my name say unto them to supply us with food say unto them that krishna is wanting and ask them therefore the boys went but when they delivered unto them the message of krishna the brahmins answered not neither gave them the food they wished but proceeded with the ceremonies that were to give them the taste of heaven after the breath had left their bodies tired and half famished the boys returned unto krishna and told him of their failure to obtain food and also of the indifference with which the brahmins had received his message then krishna smiled wisely and told them to hurry to the wives of the brahmins he knowing that women are ever devotional and have illumination while oft-times men in darkness are and so it was on hearing krishna's request they themselves hastened to him in spite of the protestations and threats of the men of the families and brought food of the finest sorts unto him and prostrating themselves before him spake o krishna thou maker of all there is blessed are we and ours that thou hast called upon us to serve thee we know thee o krishna as one greater and nearer to us than our husbands brothers and fathers and even at the risk of their displeasure to us we come to thee to lay at thy feet our poor offerings and our hearts krishna answered o women noble and true are ye to me ye in your devotions have learned to know me as your soul dearer to ye am i even than father husband and friends hence at the risk of even their displeasure do yet 
seek to serve me i draw unto me all that reach towards me blessed are ye among men go back to those who are performing the ceremonies and aid them in their rituals kindly shall they receive ye and under them will ye take my love even as unto ye all i bestow it when he saw the reluctance with which they departed from him he said know that in the kingdom of love separation cannot be and whatever heart doth meditate on me in that heart i dwell in all my glory again o oh know that by deeds i reckon ever and not by words ye have served me by deeds your husbands in their ignorance by words alone but do ye go unto them and they too shall know and love the name of krishna and the women returned unto their husbands who received them with demonstrations of pleasure and they too worship krishna in their homes and hearts End of chapter twenty one chapters twenty two twenty three and twenty four of sri krishna the lord of love by baba premanand bharati this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 22 When the summer was over, one day Krishna saw that great preparations were being made for the celebration of ceremonies in honor of one of the gods. Clothed in seeming ignorance, Krishna said to Nanda, Why these preparations, O father, and for whom are they made, and what is the potency thereof? is it a custom that through all time hath been observed or tell me do the scriptures demand that these ceremonies be held then nanda answering said we offer to-day sacrifices to him the god of the clouds to him who watereth our hillsides and giveth drink to our crops and out cattle to him indra the god who promoteth all growth by the blessing of rain which he doth supply a jealous god is he o my krishna and desires that ceremonials and sacrifices often are made and we in all humbleness strive to appease him that in his wrath he may not withhold the moisture from our land nor yet flood us with overmuch rain then krishna replied my father he who is the author of all doth give unto all what is needed he that in wrath withholdeth a blessing he never the love of creation hath known nor doth he destroy what he hath created for the creator doth ever love his creation for that which from him hath come must for ever belong to him and the part is of his great whole so indra cannot curse this land by overmuch rain or dearth of it but o oh my father tell the gopis and gopis to cease the preparations and worship not one who would destroy that which he should for ever bless but come to the hillside that entwines our land the hills and plains that furnish us with sustenance for our cattle and to the forest too where fruits grow in plenty and give of their abundance to all who but take it come there and give to the hill and the trees our sacrifices of joy and love and feed the cows with offerings of fresh grasses and walk with me around the hill in ceremonial procession we shall see their worth and their kindness they did so and krishna said unto them i am the hill and the good that therefrom doth come and his body became of a height and length that the eye of man scarce could measure and said do ye salute it and partake of its good at that the rain poured down from the skies in fearful abundance and the people in fear fled to their houses afraid of the wrath of indra seven days it poured and threatened to flood all the land but krishna smiled at the wrath of indra as he poured down his mighty rains and rolled his thunder in threatening claps above the heads of the affrighted people who had dared to neglect the sacrifices to him who through all ages had been honoured by them in their calamity the people sought out krishna whom they found at the foot of the hill go bardana the light of his body lit the darkness of night far more than the flashes of indra's wrath that in lightning burst forth o krishna they cried thou who by thy yoga power can assume the form of a mountain at will 
thou who dost drive from the path of thy feet all that unlike thy sweet will is save us from the wrath of him who even now does seek to drive us from out of life and krishna lifted his hand and eye and lo all their fear was allayed then all the world grew light as day from the glory that radiated from his body and by his yoga power he lifted the hill itself from off its base and held it on high on the tip of his fifth finger even as the beetle doth hold on his horns the leaf that covereth him completely the people gathered beneath the hill with their children and cattle seven days they were there and seven days krishna held the hill above their heads while the light that came from his smile illuminated all the space between the hill and its foundation then indra amazed looked down from his clouds and knew that the lord of all was there and had baffled his attempt to destroy what he the lord of all love had created and the rain ceased its downpouring and the rivers became calm and the sun in its glory burst forth again and flowers uplifted their water-drenched heads and the trees sprang back storm-tossed no more and krishna said to those whom he had sheltered depart in peace and fear no more the wrath of him who thought to destroy where he could not give light and indra the god of the clouds descended to earth and falling at the feet of him in abject humility said o lord thou art the holy one puffed up and proud was i in my power and saw myself greater even than thou well know i now that love is the greatest power and i in my smallness of godship insolent and destructive became i sought the praise that is ever due to thee o lord of love for unto resistless love alone praise should be given but my vanity and pride i tried to shield by the power which thou didst endow me with i thought that it was i who brought the life to all trees and by my power kept the hills in green and the forests in wondrous foliage and gave drinks to the cows and plenty to the rivers and for it i longed to see men perform the ceremonies and pray to me but to thee o lord of love is due all the glory by thee alone am i invested with power do thou in thy greatness forgive me while i in humbleness do bow to thy lotus feet and krishna threw a glance at indra that filled him with a great wild joy and said o indra though i invested thee with sovereignty by my will be not over full of pride for this i have stopped the ceremony so that thou mayest learn to know me whom thou in thy prosperity hadst quite forgotten go to thy abode and rule thy dominion but know ever the, that pride and vanity are without power and that love alone is mighty to lighten the burdens of all my world i have come to earth i now lift from thee the load which hath caused thee to forget me and in forgetting me to have lost the beauty which was born of me and with the halo of joy about him indra returned to his abode endowed with greater power chapter twenty three and now autumn sweetest and richest season of all the glad year had come and the brow of brindaban was fair to look upon the first part of the indian autumn which comes after the rainy season peace and love stood on every threshold and walked on every roadway and all lifted up their voices and the words of their gladness was love love in the hearts of all the song rose and showed them pleasant ways and haunts that ended in bliss men knew gratitude and justice which are the attributes of love love walked on earth and left its blessing in its trail the flowers whispered their love to one another and the dew clung closer to their petals because of the warmth of their love all the land seemed to have ripened into the deepest beauty for the beauty of love here was king and krishna was king and reigned in every heart and all bowed before the majesty of the beauty of his love a substitute it was for all things and satisfied the want of each heart entrancing every object and person by its beauty o wonder of love that expanded each soul and made it a world of joy and bliss in this happy time when the moon was full krishna recalled a promise he had made 
to the gopis to reward them richly for their love for him so taking his flute he went to the forest and stood on the brow of the hill all about the white moonlight lay bathing in silver the fruit trees in blossom soft the winds were and rich the fragrance that they brought on their breezes the noises of night alone could be heard and surveying his world with love-filled eyes krishna took up his flute and poured forth the strains that never were heard by man or god until that night on the moon kissed hill when all brindaban in peace did smile at the sound of those strains all earth was thrilled in ecstasy the rocks melted in love the trees trembled in the flowers fell on the earth and men and beasts all pained for god and the gopis knew that call of love nor heeded they duties or father or husband or children but turning their heart to the sound of the flute they followed their heart to krishna's feet at the first note she who was feeding her household dropped her food and followed the sound and she who was nursing her babe put her babe from her breast and answered the call another came with toilet incomplete all forsook duties husband and children to find him who drew them by the sound that was made by his love separately they came none observing the other over thorns and briars and stones they walked sharp twigs caught their hair branches detained them yet heeded they not these obstacles but onward they went with hands torn and feet bleeding and garments rent and missing till they stood at the hill where shri krishna played and drew from the flute the music entrancing at which all the rocks and earth did thrill with eyes maddened with love they gazed on him there a wondrous vision was he the light of the noonday radiated from him and his beautiful eyes with mysterious glances fell on their souls like holy balm and at that glance their souls were entranced and deepened and became as if one with him and drank of the love that from him poured and all that in them unlike him was became as pure as he and that which in them unlike that love was from out of their hearts had flown and made pure and transparent in that glad place they drank of that love which doth chain all creation to its creator love entirely blessed they sought no more nor hoped they more for each held perfection in her eyes and each knew perfect love in her heart chapter twenty four silent they stood and gazed on the beauty concentrated love of a world in each eye a spiritual force that swept from its path all matter was theirs as they beheld that centre to which their hearts did gravitate the strains of the flute that made the heaven to bend to the earth that brought the stars closer to the hillsides and drew the gods from their abodes of light had ceased and the voice of him that was all love fell on the ears of the gopis in sound as sweet as the flute's dear strains o gopis mine maids of braya my peace and greeting be with you all but why are ye here one and all tell me this the hour is late and your homes at a distance are and the forests are dark and wild beasts are in plenty and alone ye have come without husband or father what is it pray tell me that brings you here is it love for me that brings you here i draw all to myself and all love me but o oh, gopis dear the scriptures ever have said that the chaste woman leaveth not her husband father and babe to look on the face of a youth pure are your hearts i know but it is not good that ye come to me and it looseneth your chances to reach that place where all of your hearts do long to dwell when to your bodies ye have said farewell perhaps ye have come to see the forest silvered by the autumn full moon or mayhap to greet the breezes that come from the hillsides or the blossoms of the trees that grace its sides to behold if this be so now ye have seen them depart to your homes lest the hearts of your friends be alarmed at your absence the bevy of women that crowded about him grew pale with pain and ashen with fear tears came to their eyes and anxiety to their souls as they heard the words of him who was all in all to them till one more brave than the rest broke forth o lord for the master of love art thou send us not away from thy side all have we left to serve thee our master husbands have we and fathers and brothers but to thee alone we belong they are but the keepers of our earthly bodies thou art the custodian of our souls 
our souls are thine for thou art the soul from which we came and panting we come to find again the home wherein to rest difficult art thou to find o lord and now we have found thee o thrust us not from thy lotus feet we who find our joy and happiness in thee thy flute hath drawn us from our homes o suffer us to remain with thee and know thee as thou art unable are we to live without thy love o lord and our duties of home cannot engage us since our minds are ever contemplating thee if thou sendest us away we shall die be thou kind to us thy servants and grant us to serve thee with our love then singing into their midst he came he the lord of the highest the lord of love and lord of the lowest and lord of mercy and with mighty love swayed he all alike and each self was forgotten and love alone was now singing in chorus now dancing now skipping the lord and his maidens in those forest groves roamed till the river was reached then from over much pleasure proud each maid became and her simple joy to vanity was turned because thus she was favoured by krishna the youth krishna the heavenly one krishna the glorious of all glorious ones he noting this to punish the sin of vanity in swiftness from them vanished and with his going the sin was gone maddened by love the maids pleaded to the skies and the trees and the flowers for him who was their life but still he came not so absorbed in him they became themselves they forgot and even as krishna they thought they were and imitating his acts they cried to one another lo i am krishna see i hold the mountains on high lo Putana, i slay and baffle the rage of indra with my power and still came he not then they sang his praises then with breaking hearts they wailed and prayed for him to return to their midst at this he came for ever is the lord most kind to the lowly and sorrowing and he soothed their grief and brought light to their hearts and forming a circle about him in ecstasy they danced and now he that was the king of the upper world and of all the earth of the plants and oceans and clustering stars he the lord of all might and yoga power himself divided into many krishnas and each gopi thought she herself danced alone with the glorious one that as krishna was known and the dance began lightly then matter became and he who had come on earth to teach man love manifested himself in every maid that lightly and rarely stepped at his side as they danced in that grove on that wondrous night and the lotus blossoms wept tears of nectar on seeing the dance and birds and bees from unknown trees and flowers came forth and whirled round and round the heads of the dancing ones and the heavens showered blossoms rare and the gods who had stolen from their abode to watch the feast of love that krishna gave to the lovely milkmaids lo senseless became at the first sight of that revel of bliss and night throbbed and panted and forgot to draw its curtain to let day in but lengthened into eons the veil from every gopi's eye was drawn and they gazed into the ocean of active spirituality and spiritual became and all sin that were theirs no more was there and in that mighty dance a flood of spirituality went forth that took from the heart of men and the bosom of earth the sins with which they were burdened withal and men's hearts were won by the force of that love and were led to the door of that sacred abode where only the loving may go and the gopis who by force were detained and could not come to the dance with krishna lo in meditation sat and in deep pain concentrated on him and in that dance they were at his side and felt his love embrace and all their sins were as naught for to touch krishna with the mind alone was to gain spirituality and stand pure in his eyes so in those hours of intensest happiness the world gained what for births it had striven to gain and active love was ripe among mortals and that love had wiped all sin away and when the last ray of the moon was seen into the waters of the laughing river they plunged and ere the sun with ardent eye did awaken the sleeping brindaban each maiden singing homeward went transformed into a being 
of unalloyed love end of chapter twenty four chapters twenty five twenty six and twenty seven of sri krishna the lord of love by baba premanand bharati this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter twenty five in the forest grove of moonlight where the river sweetly hummed where the night-bird's plaintive chant broke in ecstasy the silence where the drooping flowers opened wide their sleep-kissed eyelids to the night and beheld the wondrous vision of the dancing maids and krishna in that hour when every maiden felt her heart grow big to bursting for the love that in her swelled up in that hour when every maiden saw beside her glorious krishna with his brow made fair with flowers and his loins wreathed with lotus when the heart of each sweet maiden foolish because of pride as she saw the one all beauteous lightly treading at her side to the music of the dance one there was of all those gopis she the chiefest of them all one who knew naught else but him every thought of self had vanished every thought of aught but him at his side she lightly stepped nor felt the grass neath her feet nor knew the strains of rapturous music that fell like wine upon each heart all she knew was love was there naught but this remembered she to the winds that came from hillsides to the shadows that the trees did cast did she whisper over and over that confession of her love till overweighed by the sweet burden did the winds and languorous love chant and sigh then die in silence and the shadows of the trees trembled at the depth of love that the maid did whisper to them as he passed them in the dance radha was she youthful lovely she is playmate of the forest she with love look in her face she the queen of love among them giving all and asking naught by the mighty will of him she had come on earth to dwell she who ever reigned with him in glory she now walked with him on earth she the fairest of these maidens she the rarest of them all knowing love in its intensity living all its bliss and when he the lord of love vanished from the dancing gopis she sweet radha with him vanished and they wandered in the deep groves these the twain who in glory dwelt she the loving he the lover both the blissful both the purest he the dew kissed flowers gathered twining them about the maiden but the flowers and their beauty were not half as fair as she and sweet radha pearl of maidens gazed with love-light in her eyes knowing naught was half so lovely as the hands that placed them there thus they roamed in shadowy moonlight rested here in softened shadows chanting love-songs to each other knowing naught but pure delight till awearied with her roaming radha begged to cool her feet in the smiling waves of jamna that she spied there in the moonlight krishna greatest of all lovers lightly stooped to lift the maiden and in loving arms to bear her where the smiling waters rippled but within the breast of radha at that act pride sprang to being and within that home of love vanity crept and nestled there for a moment krishna held her then with lightning swiftness from her side he vanished but in that twinkle of a moment radha knew what her sin was and aware of her enemy the selfless love which was herself her deity supreme arose and quenched all thirst of vanity quickly gliding through the forest she again did join the gopis spying in the further distance krishna soothing one and all to his side she lightly stepped she the radiant she his heaven mate purged from sin and lightly clothed with the love that knew but him chapter twenty six while the land of vrindavan was rich in the love which krishna flooded it with all the heart of kansa the brother of devaki was filled with fear for his life for it was known to his quaking heart that the eighth child of devaki still walked the earth and also he knew that rid it was that the hand of that child would lay him low far and wide he sought the child the boy whom he felt was the god who had come to bring to the virtuous and lowly 
man peace and sweep from the land the oppressor and tyrant the marvellous deeds of sri krishna his beauty and strength the might of his love had been heralded far and wide and all the then known world was turned towards the forest land of brindaban with expectant eye and thirsting heart forever the heart of man doth pant for and turn to the place where love doth dwell when tales of krishna's wonderful life and glorious deeds came to the ears of kangsa he felt that the boy whom yasoda and nanda reared as their own in sweet brindaban was the child that he sought to kill when he came from the womb of devaki and when by the hand of fate itself he had been baffled and the dull hungry flame of hatred and rancor rose like fire in this bad man's heart and an atmosphere as of hell about him rose and all his peace slipped to the dust and his secret fear that like a coiled serpent had lain in silence now uncurled its length and lifted his head and darted here and there to strike the prey that aroused it from its slumber and long he sat and meditated evil against the youth that he could not slay in spite of his kingship for the name of krishna was a balm to the hearts of all men who had ever heard it spoken and though king he was and ruler over many he knew that the strength of the fame of krishna the boy bred in brindaban more potency possessed than the name of kangsa the king for he was ruler over the bodies of men only his name dwelt on the tongues of men who prattled with words alone and those words embodied not the thought from which they sprang words that praised where praises were not due and applauded where it was not deserved men who dared not note the indignity of his motives and their results nor discriminate between the righteousness of his action and his blood-dyed deeds vexed his ears with fawning acclamations to-day because of his power yet to-morrow blamed and hissed him out of sight but krishna was ruler over all hearts by the might of his wondrous love he was the divine incarnation the inner call the satisfied softness that all felt compelling all yet demanding naught uncovered frank he stood forth inviting all to look on him to know and to love and be saved too deep for the human understanding to measure too large for human heart to embrace yet acquainting each man with himself this love still untaught still gazing on him who was all encased in love all made of love all teeming with love they knew themselves of his creation and him their sovereign lord and kangsa knew that by knowing him the world would boldly recoil from the sickening deeds of his cruelty the foul plots of his life would be laid bare to all and the world in rebellion would rise and he knew too that he and his worldly powers as a weakling would be by the side of the cowherd krishna so among his counsellors an edict went forth that forth that festivities be held in honour of the bow on the fourteenth day of the lunar month and that sacrifices in great abundance be made he also said unto them that preparations be made and pavilions be raised and the arena cleared and the amphitheatre festooned with flowers and banners and proclamations were issued that all the inhabitants of his whole kingdom be invited to his capital and that the people of braya be included therein at last he sent his ambassador in great pomp and glory to call to his palace the seventh son of devaki balaram and the eighth son krishna to witness the sports and partake in the wrestling contests and show to the kingdom their dexterity and strength thus spoke kansa and called to akrura and made him the ambassador that was to bring krishna and rama to mathura but this also he ordered when here they are brought see that the strongest and mightiest wrestlers of my kingdom be brought to match them and fairly or foully to lay them low and he added if they if, if your death fails to meet them withal keep the infuriated elephant close to the gate so that he in his madness may tread out the life of krishna at my command these were his orders and akrura his ambassador bowing to him departed to braha chapter twenty seven the sun was setting in braha and krishna with companions was homeward leading the cows to be milked the hills were gold-tipped the chirp of the birds and sleepy a curse fell on the ear when far in the distance the hoofs of stamping steeds pounding the earth caused the boys to turn coming in royal splendour towards them they beheld a chariot with blazing banners of the colours of the royal house of mathura the boys stood in amazement at as near the chariot came but krishna smiled with his eye full of wisdom and aslant he looked toward the boys and the cows and then at akrura the ambassador who came in the chariot at that glance akrura quickly descended and fell at the feet of krishna 
and saluted him in reverence and worship for the dart of love that came from krishna revealed to the heart of akrara that krishna was more than human and not less than divine with that glance his soul was drawn to the soul of him who stood there to receive him and his message and he knew that the author of life he beheld and that blessed he was beyond all measure to be chosen to look on that wonderful face a moment he lay in the dust at the feet of the youth akrura the proud the inmate of palaces the counsellor and companion of the king and emperor then with kindly grace krishna raised him and embraced him and led him forth to the house of nanda and with his own hands brought rich drinks and choice viands with the countenance that had on it the glow of the sun and the beauty that surpassed all the beauty ever seen and having partaken of the meal with his father and brother and guest krishna addressed him thus o friend long i knew of this coming of thine and marvelled at its delay yet tell them my kinsman the errand of the on which thou wert sent the then akura related to nanda and the fear-stricken yasoda the king's message his plans and his evil design a smile of wisdom flitted over the face of krishna as he nestled close to the side of his mother and bade her forget her anxiety for him as none there was in all the world that could harm him he vowed that even the most dreaded kangsa was powerless to bring about the evil he planned but the mother yasoda she who had reared and nourished the child at her heart she who had caressed his lovely baby softness and with fondness saw his first toddling steps she could not be comforted nor would her heart cease its beating of pain and terror and akrara related how kangsa in wrath had thrown devaki and vasudeva vasudeva into prison on hearing that krishna was the eighth son of their union and yasoda wept as the thought of the mother who had lost all her sons at the cost of krishna and yet had not the blessing of suckling him yasoda most blessed of all women art thou who nursed the lord of love as thy son and fitted wert thou by him to bestow on his baby life thy caresses and receive the love that flowed from him worthy wert thou to croon him to sleep to bathe the sweet beauty of him who though he had all there was yet chose to be soothed and guided and directed by thee in his babyhood and when to baby boyhood's estate he grew and startled all the world by the wonder of his doing to thee he came as a little child to be loved and petted and soothed of his weeping and fretting and now when called king of the land and called king by the hearts of the whole known world that panted to look upon his wonderful beauty and see the might of his strength even now close to thy heart he nestles and twines his arms about thy neck and gazes with love light into thine eyes to comfort thee and feels a shadow mantle his heart as he banishes the pain from thy brow for well he knows that no more to thee the forest child he will be for the world now claims him as its own and his bigger world an actor he must be thus heart to heart they sit the mother and the foster son he who was lord of all the world and she who reared him as a child End of chapter twenty seven chapters twenty eight twenty nine and thirty of sri krishna the lord of love by baba primanand bharati this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter twenty eight so night wore away and in the early morning hours akrara was ready to start on the journey with rama and krishna but great was the wail and heart-rending the lamentations that came from the hearts of the gopis with tear-filled eyes they rushed to his home and pleaded and prayed that he stay in their midst for to them life seemed impossible without him and brindaban could not be blessed when he ceased to walk thereon and what would the cattle and flowers and trees do without the sound of his love-touched flute o oh, remain with us krishna o oh, lord of our hearts o oh, keep close to our land most beautiful one broken are our hearts bowed low our spirit at the thought of our lives without thy presence to cheer us dull are our minds and leaden our hearts by the pain of thy going 
oh leave us not in this ocean of sorrow but stay where we ever may look on thy face o thou who shapest all that is who hast knitted our hearts to thyself how canst thou tear it away from us who know the sweetness of its love and the fruits that spring therefrom once having known thy smile o krishna how can we bear the dawning of day without the light of thy smile in which the concentrated beauty of thy whole creation lies to fill it and make each day whole and how can we see the shadows of night thicken and darken and know that no more we will roam in forest and dance in the moonlight with thee our beloved o oh, depart not from us thou in whom we are buried thou whose love doth envelop us all thou whose universe embrace around us is entwined o oh, go not from out our midst we implore thee thus tearing their tresses and weeping the gopis clung to the wheels of the chariot in which krishna and rama sat ready to start on their journey to mathura then krishna arose and looking deep in the eye of each he waved his hand in farewell and left the smile of bliss with them that filled each soul to overflowing then forward the restless chargers plunged the dust rising high and quite covering the chariot the maids stood like hewn marble still yet serene and the cattle that grazed on the hillside turned towards the road where the chariot vanished in their eyes a look of yearning love while the deer on the brow of the hill with arched neck and wild shy glance heaved a quick short sigh as if hurt and the soft breasts of the singing birds quivered and a little sad song burst from their throats while the trees and the flowers hung limp and wilted as if the glad life had left their hearts a groan arose from the wild beasts in the forest as if in the hand of death they were trapped the sun vanished from the skies and all nature seemed clothed with the garment of sadness then forth the sun burst in glorious splendour as the joy of the smile of the lord of love awoke in potency to bless all living things whereon it had fallen and sweet brindaban in silence lay forever blessed and forever beloved for the feet of him who was god had walked there and made holy its soil chapter twenty nine and the chariot bearing akrura rama and krishna was followed close by the carts bearing nanda and the gopas who carried gifts for the king kangsa to whom all must present the best of their store on reaching the banks of the jumna krishna and rama in sportiveness descended from the chariot and dipped in the sacred waters of the river then ascended again to the chariot whereat akrura the ambassador had a dip in the water too reciting the sacred texts in the meanwhile when lo in the waters where he stood he beheld the laughing krishna and rama sitting in the lap of the god of water amazed and bewildered he gazed towards the chariot where last he had seen the brothers and there they sat talking as when he had left them again he dipped his head neath the waves of the water and again he saw rama and krishna and knew that his senses were not deluded krishna though seemingly a youth with all a youth's sportiveness and play yet was the lord incarnate and near the cart akrura looked in the eyes of krishna where the wisdom that created the universe lay and answered the questioning gaze thus lord none is there as wonderful as thou art all hast thou created and in thee is all creation all have i seen that there is to see and the chariot proceeded towards mathura chapter thirty noon reigned in the city of mathura when the chariot bearing the two sons of vasudeva entered that city the fame of the deeds and the beauty of rama and krishna was known in all that kingdom 
and their coming to partake of its celebrations and to participate in the sports and wrestling at the command of Kangsa the king had been heralded all over the land and the populace was glad and knew not why and they said in their hearts krishna the youth the wonderful youth of brandaban will grace our land by his coming so the streets were crowded to welcome him there and the tops of the houses were flowered with the bright faces of women who grazed from there to catch the first glance of him whom rumour had crowned the most glorious youth of the then known world o beauty how potent art thou o conqueror of all that winneth the heart of the lowliest child and enslaveth the heart of the proud queen of the world that slaketh the thirst of the parched soul and tutoreth the dullest mind never quickened by thought so mid blare of trumpets and with banners unfurled the lord of love entered mathura and above the roar of the celebrations and preparations rose the murmurs and shouts of greetings from the sea of upturned faces of men and from the canopy of sweet downcast eyes of women that thronged to see his coming and millions of tongues repeated his name and sang his praises and millions of souls were flooded with love because they had looked on his face and said his name which was as potent as his love for his name contained himself and those who uttered his name had him in their hearts and lo the world to them was complete majestic and vast he walked mid the worshipping people who saw but a youth of transcendent beauty but felt the unfathomable mystery the unknowable grandeur worthy to receive their deepest obeisance through the streets of mathura he went bringing light to all whereon his smile fell and Kangsa the tyrant grew cold and grey for he knew his doom was drawing nigh and his sleep was disturbed by evil dreams for he knew already the populace was welcoming him whom none could look upon but to love End of chapter thirty chapters thirty one thirty two and thirty three of sri krishna the lord of love by baba premanand bharati this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter thirty one the next day krishna and rama went forth to view the capital of mathura in all its holiday splendour they found the gates of the palace made of pure gold and studded with jewels and crystal the broad street of the city and the pretty parks all luxuriant were with rare flowers and wondrous foliage the splendid houses all seemed clothed and beautified for the ceremonies of the bow the symbol of the warrior's might that were to take place that day it chanced that a washerman passed their way balancing upon his head the clothes and making way towards the palace with them in a spirit of mischief krishna said give us the clothes that you carry to kangsa good fellow for in need of them are we give them and more i will give unto thee but the washerman in insolence replied upstarts who are ye to dare to aspire to wear the clothes that belong to kangs of the great never have ye seen such clothes and unfit to even touch them are ye be off and back to the country from whence ye came or i will call the guards who by my word will throw you in chains krishna with a smile and a wave of his bare hand severed the head from the trunk of the washerman and proceeded to take the clothes and a weaver who was passing their way helped them put on the garments while a florist who near by was weaving garlands for kangsa came to rama and krishna and bedecked them with garlands and flowers and thus clad for the festivities onward they went but first the weaver and the florist were rewarded with great spiritual powers by krishna the giver of all good things to those who give unto him their love as they proceeded on their way a woman of great deformity came near a parcel she held in her hands which she guarded carefully 
as close she came to krishna she lifted her head and gazed on his face for a moment she stood a smile transforming her face then the bowl of precious sandalwood ointment which to the king kansa she carried to krishna she reached and said unto him o youth more beautiful art thou than aught that mine eye has ever rested upon to those who are sweet should sweetness be given i am a servant of king kansa this fragrant unguent for him i make but more fitted by far is its richness for thee o oh, allow me to lay it at thy feet krishna looked at her deformity then at her love-filled eyes and putting his feet on the tips of her toes and his two fingers under her chin he wrenched her form upward and she who was known as the trabakra she of three bends was a hunchback no more but tall and straight was she and her face never lost the beauty it bore when it looked on the face of krishna as she offered to anoint him with zeal and love and from that day forth she was known as the most surpassingly beautiful woman in all that land thus love for krishna creates a charm that grows into beauty and never more fades thus all day long he wandered about healing the sinful the sick and the dying by the very breath of his passing and to soaring fathers and mothers that clay long lost sons were restored and even the dead were brought to life and were seen with the eye and felt with the heart and encircled with the arms of those whose hearts were empty for them and thus the lord with benign smile brought to all the gifts of life and love and none were there in all that land who felt not the power thereof chapter thirty two when the hour for the festivities of the bow began spectators innumerable filled the galleries and platforms of the amphitheatre by every tongue the praise of krishna's beauty was sung and all awaited with eager desire the arrival of the brothers brahma and krishna in the centre of the arena a platform was raised where kang saw the king and his ministers were enthroned his eyes were lurid with hate and his heart quaking with fear for his dreams had been full of evil omens and he knew that he of all that multitude was out of tune with nature for krishna the youth had scattered flowers of love in that city for all who chose to partake of them and all hearts had gathered them eagerly only he alone had turned from the good and abided by his hate and he knew in spite of the wrestlers and the wild elephant and even the guard that stood ready to slay at his command that the youth would conquer as he ever had and that he would die by his hands sooner or later for had it not been writ thus and again had not every attempt of his to put out the life of the eighth child of devaki been baffled in marvellous ways and still the youth lived and smiled surely he was hari the invincible his hate betrayed him and was hourly leading him into a trap it charmed him like a subtle snake while it frightened him like a huge wild beast yet gladly would he have opened the valve that held his wrath and flooded all with its poison if by so doing he might have annihilated that glorious youth who stood ever before him by night and day and smote his cruel heart as with a glowing rod so all his stolid self-possession was gone as he looked on when krishna the beautiful soft as a delicate woman yet invincible as unconquered strength walked mid the hysterically joyous shouts of the people to where the giant bow was guarded by warriors bold a moment and then he seized the bow and held it aloft with one hand the bow that twelve men of mighty strength alone could handle and with a twist of his wrist it fell at their feet broken in twain the guards rushed forward as if to strike him low but when near him they stopped and looked at his glory they crouched low on their haunches and fell on their faces unable to move for the life had gone out of their bodies by the first wave of his hand but blessed were they for none died by the hand of krishna but by him was made pure and straightway to the realms of bliss they were sent 
for where the hand of krishna rested whether to bring life or take life away that man forever holy was made by the touch so also with kangsa it was dwelling constantly on krishna even though in hate he came closer to love than he himself knew so the celebration of the bow ended in triumph for krishna and rama and though kangsa sent a body of well-armed soldiers to apprehend them lo the conquerors victorious walked from the arena followed by the cheers of the worshipping populace who saw that in strength they were invincible even as in beauty they were incomparable and they looked forward eagerly to the morrow when the brothers were to participate in wrestlings and sports but rama and krishna returned to spend the night with the gopas while the people of mathura neither ate nor slept but sang of their beauty and might chapter thirty three but kangsa was troubled by the triumph of the brothers and next morning called the wrestlers who were to match the two brothers and again put to them the weight of the contest and placed armed men at the gates of the arena he then proceeded with many forebodings to the amphitheatre where the sports were to take place he took his seat amid the beating of drums the blaring of trumpets and the waving of banners already many spectators had assembled among them many crowned chiefs brahmins and kshatriyas all with expectancy overwhelming as to the outcome of the wrestling forward the wrestlers came with a rush and stood in the centre of the ring wrestlers whose fame was known throughout all the land for their brute strength and skill few there were who dared to meet these men and as krishna and rima came forward to see the meeting of the first pair they found a huge elephant posted there at the entrance krishna seeing this asked the driver to make way with the beast for him at this the rider urged the infuriated beast towards him with a smile krishna grasped with his soft little hand the nose of the furious beast who with a bellow fell to the ground lifeless dragging the driver down with him krishna then tore the tusks from the brute's head and rama and krishna entered the wrestling grounds with the tusks in their hands and blood stained from the slaying of the beast kangsa's heart sank at the sight and even the wrestlers recoiled in terror at the blood-stained figures who gazed on them with supernatural power in their youthful eyes yet true to the command of kangsa chanur the chief of the wrestlers cried come ye youngsters good wrestlers are ye the good king hath invited you to participate in the contest so come and wrestle and give pleasure to king kangsa he who is the greatest of all kings and men with a smile all wise krishna looked at the wrestlers then with eye aslant he gazed on kangsa who trembled at the look and answered chanur thus though subjects of king kangsa yet only boys of the forest are we unlearned in the art of wrestling therefore we pray you match us with boys of our age and not with men whose muscles are iron and whose hearts are bold as a lion's if we are to meet men like these unfair is the game and unjust and we decline the arrangement then chanur became insolent because of the confession of krishna which he thought was made in weakness and cried o thou who hast killed the furious elephant as if in sport thou askest to be matched with one of thine own age with me thou shalt wrestle me the most powerful the strongest man of the age and rama shall match with mushtik and be it just or unjust fair or unfair thee i will fight and fight to kill and so a combat began between the man that was mortal and the youth that was god the man a giant was of colossal brute force of stature great with muscles all knotted and crooked as the boughs of an oak tree of many years growth and the boy smooth as a sweet maiden all curved with grace smilingly awaited the onslaught forward the wrestler came with the snort of a wild bull to meet the boy who calm and serene smiled in his eye the people arose and sprang from their benches and hissed and threw their headgear and staffs into the ring as they shouted give up the fight is unfair 
oh shame they cried coward and beast put a stop to the slaughter on seeing the seemingly unequal fight several times chanur struck furious blows at the fair slight body of krishna the youth but provoked naught but a smile from him while beads of blood sprang to the brow and arms of chanur and his huge legs trembled and broke at the knee as he tried to reach the belt of him who after several circles about the ring seized chanur by the arms and lifting him high above his head to the wonderment of the crowd dashed him down to the ground as a playing child doth throw the pebbles and the wrestler breathed his last with a yearning look of love in his eyes as they rested on him whom a moment before he beheld with hate and rama too victorious was but when krishna stood and faced the mass of people there they shouted and cheered with mad delight and jumped on the railings in panic wild he is more than human he is god come down to earth it is he for whom the world hath waited he will free our land from oppression hari is he the invincible o mighty art thou and possessest in thy frame the forces of all the universe but kongsa the king full of terror and rage cried ho guards seize him and take him to the outskirts of my kingdom and drive him into banishment imprison nanda and yasoda confiscate all their lands and belongings and take from the gopas their wealth and goods and drive them from brindaban kill the vaki and vasu deva who are now imprisoned in my dungeon kill all who know and love this youth tis my command a moment krishna gazed on kangsa then with a bound he reached the platform where kangsa stood with sword unsheathed o kangsa i am the eighth son of devaki whom thou so long hast sought to slay it is writ that thou by my hand must die o king dost thou think that human hand can turn aside the force of the law and hurling kangsa down on the ground he leaped over the prostrate king whereat his life departed but his glazed eyes were fixed on him whose hand had blessed even him by its touch and burned away every sin from his soul then hastening through the lines of guards who prostrated low at his approach he went to where his father and mother were imprisoned in dungeons dark and deep lo he bent to their feet murmuring in accents sweet o parents mine o much have ye suffered for my sake and all ye shall gain through me for in me is all there is to gain and outside of me there is naught from thy womb o devaki i was born yet out of me thou didst come i prostrate before thee then saluting them both mid deafening cheers he led them forth to the palace and the father of kangsa dethroned by his son received and welcomed them there and wild was the joy of the populace on that day that krishna lifted the yoke of bondage from them and they blessed the hour that the sun had ushered in that day which brought a new ruler in their land and already mathura felt the joy that was but a forerunner of a perfect reign for krishna it was who placed on the throne the one who would rule the land in goodness and plenty End of chapter thirty three messages and revelations of sri krishna the lord of love by baba premanand bharati this librivox recording is in the public domain messages and revelations from sri krishna within my belly you do dwell yet in every heart i sit know you this o oh my own and you shall forget and fetter yourselves to me the wings of yourself now are close clapped like a dripping feather all wet with tears of pain and folded about your body keeping it rolled like a ball unable to stand upon the feet of might and strength which i have endowed you with these wings my own i will spread for you until the grand noble forehead of yourself shall rise above 
the realm where time and space do reign deep have the waters of seeming failures dashed about thy feet and threatened to drag you into the perturbed sea of despair but still thy head has been close to the clouds and thou hast caught the smile of my radiance and heard the voice of my kindness dost thou think that i who have numbered the grains of sand and have weighed the drops of water and all the oceans seas lakes and rivers that i will allow one who is a spark of myself to be devoured by the wolf of famine or by the dread of despair look up it is light look to thy right and a hand reaches out to thee and i have placed thee where those who know how to love what is lovable can look at thee and love the soul which has need of blessedness to that soul do i answer at its call let it feed the heart that is hungry for an answer a lamp within your midst i place and those who would enjoy the radiance which the lamp gives out must cast their eyes to where the lamp does stand and stir to reach unto its height a shading tree upon the sandy hill i place the weary traveller all hot who of its cooling shade would partake must come within the circle of its throwing shade he who will not see the lamp or walk to where the shadows dark and cool do fall he cannot enjoy the blessing of the lamp as it casts its light or the cooling shades of the slanting branches so tis with love if you will seek its warmth and glow do thou seek it only those who seek me do i in return meet oh the love that stoops low at every foot take thou that love in thy hands and burdens will lighten put thou my love in thy heart and thy world will brighten o oh, give with love to all who come within the radius of thy glory the heritage of my love much more thou wilt know as immeasurable as space thyself shall become and heights in thy hearts will appear and splendors more splendid than all thou hast known and heights more sublime than the whited peaks where once thou hast stood and looked into the calm tranquillity of my everlasting eye the man who seeketh to do good oft doth lose his aim by becoming desirous to reach high places through that same good a man who hoards his gold oft learns to love the smile of his golden sweetheart and develops into an avaricious creature the maid who plaits shining tresses in so doing may be weaving a net of vanity in her soul this by ignorance of self may be brought about though the original motive was pure and good hence ignorance is sin a sharp-edged sword hung at the side will cut the baby's hand as it plays with its sharpness there again ignorance is punished like sin love now does mould you love does enfold you love does behold you and bind you my children i wear on my brow the great pearl of love which no god or saint or man or worm or beast or ant can resist even i who all love do look upon the beauty of my love and love and love ye o oh my children that jewel shall wear on your brow i who am all love ye may wear 
and i who am love filled ye may hold for love must ever fly to love and love must ever draw from love and love must ever live in love for life doth spring from love and i do live in love o list plant not thy seed in fertile ground and wait for it to root and blossom and fruit for thy own self alone rather do thou plant thy seed for the heart of every heart that lives within my great heart he who waters tends and sprouts his plant not for his own sweet taste alone but for the taste of every man he of that sweetness and freshness shall taste even before the fruit is ripe know you o oh my children the life which i have given you sprang from my love o oh, make thy life a song sublime and not a groan evil availeth not when you my laws do know list i fill your heart with love with sunshine which freely i scatter to you and i will bring there soft rains and the seed of love to life i will stir and that which to your senses of infants do reek of the charnel house a fertilizer shall become for your love to grow and sprout even as the creeping vine that drops and takes root wherever it falls i am the swiftness in the sailing cloud the flame struck from the flint i'm the fire housed in every star the breath i am of every living thing all things that are do love for i am all that lives i who am life and love i who am love and life am naught is there besides the hearing ear i am the seeing eye the throbbing heart i waken in every man the love that reaches out o daughter rise in thy dignity and survey that which thou art master of and look to the marble halls which beckon thee even now know this that love and wisdom is the mystery of all things and that love when understood is twin to dominion do thou the work that lies at thy hand remember each day is thy fulfilled world it is thy zion it is thy life complete such jewels as have crowned few are daily being laid at thy feet spurn them not for the material seeming blessings which invite thee end of messages and revelations from sri krishna a holy man's prayer one of sri krishna the lord of love by baba primanand bharati this librivox recording is in the public domain there was a holy man who thought never of himself but ever of those among whom he lived and passed his days so wondrous virtuous and holy he was that oft times the host of unseen ones who loved to remain near him recognized the greatness of his goodness and spoke among themselves thus holy is this man in truth and strange to say he knows it not surely few are like him let us who love him ask him how he would be served by us how we may bestow upon him gifts which to the blind earth walkers are called the supernatural or miraculous so be it in unison they replied and one among the spirit host who by the strength of beauty of holiness was superior addressed him thus o holy men we who look upon you hourly and love you much we would bestow upon you some gift what shall it be the miracle of making all who look upon you man woman or child love you or would it be the miracle of relieving all whom thou dost meet and love of the load of poverty which thou seest and which makes thee sad at the look or shall it be the power of relieving the sick of his burden of disease 
which draggeth him to an early grave the holy one looked at the gentle and lovely spirit with eyes in which dwelt the very beauty of love and holiness and said nay dear spirit not for me are these miracles to my lord who is the giver of all joy and pain doth belong the great power of removing what he giveth but this i ask that i walk in humbleness and in my heart the prayer will grow to love my lord the more that love i may be able to give to all who come within my reach this o gentle spirit is all i ask depart and allow me to but see my lord in humbleness and pray to love him the spirit departed and to the unseen host did say for such as he is the love of the lord already hath he acquired what we in vain seek love for the lord glory to guru who bringeth love and light wherever he walketh love love's own creation is it is its own reward no human law its force can sway no human force can stay its tide love is the source of living things and all that it doth love naught that thine eyes can rest upon but hath its root in love the heart that love denies is cold it sleepeth and it stagnant is it is frozen o'er by snows of earth and sinneth most against itself love giveth of itself to all nor asketh it return it is a law unto itself a law to man and beast and plant the snake doth glide love's warmth to know the bird the air doth cleave its force to feel the flower upward turns its wandering gaze the kiss of love to meet the beast doth plant all eagerly the eye of love to behold the man it is who makes the simple theme of love a huge complexity in restlessness he struggles for that which he already hath for that without which he could not exist o oh, my jewels lean on the altar of my all creating love and soon your heart will be as a laughing child quick my all responsive touch to know a bursting fount of gladness and generosity you will be and the hot desert of your heart which dry and sandy now is a garden of lily and rose will become love was my natural gift to one and all of my creation who this doth know a treasure hath in truth o oh, my children ever outward looking turn within your blinded eyes and there a world all big with joy and love you will find a world made wise by my wisdom a world of the real then you will know what love has made of you what love doth bless you with what love doth will that you should be poor and ignorant is the man who seeketh for that which he hath and knoweth it not poor and ignorant is the man who knoweth not the nobility of my love that surroundeth him with which i crowned him withal o oh, my children in your midst my well-beloved one doth walk mark freely all his love he giveth gladly of my love receiveth and the measure of his sweetness doth he give to overflowing unto all that near him come lo he knoweth my love is flowing into him that largely giveth of the love i do bestow within your midst in every heart i am unknown till by a touch of pain and struggle great you brush against my wide white wings then thrilled and amazed you look into mine eyes and know that i am and ever have been and ever must be the hand of my love is gone from my abode and scattered into space giving unto all that will receive unto each child of mine blessings i have given oft times in their blindness they saw it not but few there are who raise the gifts that he in great profusion at their feet more are those who turn their eyes in wilful waywardness from them and with yearning cry do wail for that which i have crowned them withal 
most of my own do amble on defiantly denying that such gifts there are denying me the giver of all gifts denying me the author of their being the few who raise my gifts and make them as their own and making them as their own thus do give them forth to those their hungering neighbours unto them do i scatter more than they in ease can carry for he who giveth forth receiveth ever largely of the store i hold for them he who hungers to feed the heart of those he meets along his way unto him shall be given the wherewithal to satisfy their hunger o oh, my child what mattereth it who speaketh the word of love of truth of courage and life unto thy heart whether thou dost catch it from the song of birds from the lips of a babe from the glad tone in a mate or the shout in a frolicsome boy whether it comes from the heart of him who hath given all to know me and to reflect me in thine heart or whether it came from the spirit all bright as he hovered about to find thee away when thou didst grope in the wilderness of doubt and a maze of worldly turmoil take thou the truth from wherever it comes for truth that is real finds its root in me and no matter how slender and lean the twig may be it is the shoot that has sprung from my root glory to guru whose wisdom is as silver is glory to guru who by his love and wisdom illumineth the hearts that seek after me his day and his waking his night and his slumber i with my love will preserve o oh, my children illumined you will be yet you seek not the light that sits in your midst its radiance i would throw in your midst and give to the heart that is darkened with clouds the peace that it seeketh the joy that it owneth the joy that is warming to the senses and that dances like live streams of water that leap from the mountains and play with the rivers o oh, tarry a while from the whirl and the strife of the world ye who seek my light the sons of my light shall be and earth shall not soil nor rob you of my glory nor will your mind be darkened and dull for i will beautify and quicken it with love and with joy for the light of the mind is love the light of life is love where love is contentment and peace are where contentment is there my smile is too where contentment reigneth in satisfaction i dwell where contentment is there the fountain of peace too is playing o ye who find perplexity above your rearing head and underneath your lagging feet at your right hand and your left hand an enigma unto yourselves will be until lowly and glad as a child you become then me you will know and knowing yourselves you will know and your world you will rule and looking out from the great world within to the smaller world without all things you will bless and find all is well with time and you you who give out much love dost multiply my love unto yourself but you who nourish souring doubt and fill your heart with hate and bitterness but subtract hourly from the gifts which are thine by the right of my blessing and love for thoughts of evil rise not beyond the earth but thoughts of love do mount to my throne crowned with living stars and rebound again to the centre freighted with my love and light humility is the softened shadow that is cast by my love lowly it lieth on the ground yet he that is weary and full of the hate of the world doth seek it and rest in its shadow and strength he doth gather in peace he doth draw from the nurse all gentle that gladdens his day humility is welcome unto me hence all men do seek it yet know it not the countenance of humility is restful and good to look upon and he that is fettered by flesh senses its beauty even as a blind man senses the rose that is near by its fragrance and sweetness as my feathered and furred creatures do sense the night by the darkness that precedeth it when humility in your midst doth sit know that true worth is nigh and rejoice in the blessing that ye behold for true humility springeth from my love and with majesty pure and holy is crowned it is the grace of all grace that i on my children bestow o ye every step that you take i am with you and lead you to my great heart and joy i bestow and, and obstacles remove and sorrows erase that you wist not of 
the beginning and the end of all i am the sap in the tree the foundation of the rock but whereon it leaneth the force of the eagle that round it saileth the oil of the whale the deeps wherein it sporteth i make the worm to crawl on its belly from the clouds i flash in light that blindeth the nobleness in man am i the gladness and beauty the spontaneous spring of the bounding beast on the earth the star on high the rose at your feet the jewels transparency my touch hath made glory to guru who liveth close to the heart of love and giveth love to the heart of man under him i bestow my blessings even as the early fruit tree doth shower its blossoms on all that stand beneath its fragrant glory o oh, my children drink of the cup that is in your midst that was deep in my ocean of love and strength and sweetness to you it will bring and your hearts it will quicken even as light doth feed the darkness and make transparent the gloom o oh, you who sit in bondage and pant for freedom and seek the love that is a world unto itself and with satisfaction is crowned i am the key that opens the portal that reaches to the rarely discovered land where contentment alone is found let not the flickering flame from within urge you on to serving the senses for the love of the flesh but vaporous is and falleth again to the ground whence it was drawn walk in the sunshine climb up to the mountain stretch the pinions of your soul to its summit in cheerfulness sit clothed in courage and with my love's completeness i will crown you with all a chain of love around your loins i have cast stretch not nor pull nor fret nor strain lest it hurt but you who walk laughing in its reach the wisdom of my every hour shall know he who seeks me to him understanding i will give that revealeth all things even unto a little child and my wisdom and truth from his heart shall flow as strong streams of water flow from a fountain and my hand of beauty i will register in his heart and all who look upon his countenance shall see the glory of his coming and the joy of his awakening crowned on the snow-capped mountains i am yet in the lowly blade of grass am i too eternal space i feel yet am i captured in every heart all men seek me yet are my arms entwined around every man none can exist without me yet in far-off space am i enthroned i am the one and all the all-in-one whom noises confuse not nor disturb for above the roaring of the thunderclaps above the booming of the rising waves the first faint wail of the newborn infant i hear and smile at his coming i hold the reins of the winds in my hand and control their motion and measure their distance when darkness is my eye doth light the nest where the young owlet hooteth the first green of the sapling i note even as i see the upheaval of the earth o oh, my children no heights there are that you cannot mount no depths that you cannot sound no boundaries that you cannot surround it few but let the light shine in your soul your soul that was born of light and panteth to bathe again in that light o oh, my beloved thee i embrace and enfold thee i hold and bless to the days everlasting glory to guru who liveth the truth and love again o oh my children for wisdom you call but my words do not sink into the depth of your heart but few in your midst do my glory receive but once it is applied i come a light i place in your midst but unheeding you are wayward forgetful and fretful you cling with strained hands to the chains of bondage the wisdom that comes from my realm you would have yet you reach not your soul to that realm each man receives a wisdom that is born in this realm you eat from the table whereat you do sit you munch of the fruit from the tree that you pluck but your pure hearts are hindered for want of satisfaction yet you turn from my table of plentiful supply often from the crumbs that fall from my feast would you know o oh my children how your hearts shall be led you yourself shall be fed with my love quit the longing and striving for that which is null and void cease from your ignorant ideas of happiness of wisdom from your 
empty desires your thoughts insincere know this it is that hinders thy heart from knowing my love it is this that prohibits thine eyes from seeing my face lo o heart that is empty and is shattered by darkness i bring thee now a light to give peace a peace that is buried and strives to be free lo freely from the streams of blessing that flows from my love you may partake it is its own flavour and virtue its richness of charm it never can lose its grace is unbounded as far reaching as the sky you see and as you quaff of its nectar your heart will grow bursting with joy as you look from the big world within to small world without all this shall be well in time with you i beautify nature with my breath as the breeze that sweetens all space the silver of the wide riding moon is my glory the down on the breast of the dove is my softness love touched love made love filled am i the secret of life the revelation of death the beginning of all things the end everlasting am i of all the lights the light am i which you know by the shadow the shadow am i which has cast all that light for you all my face to behold the rose lifts its petals my love to unfold i fan your hot hearts with my breezes of love i crystal and diamond the snow as it falls as my breath sweeps the earth to prepare for seed so my breath sweeps your hearts to prepare for my love and the sap of your souls like the sap of the tree will flow through your life and burst into budding my beloved my son from bondage is free thy heart i do clasp and breathe there a blessing i hold thee and bless thee and serve thee my son a little while yet and thy mission is over come thou to the innermost heart and list to my love greeting to guru who by the sunlight of love brought distinction to ignorance love stoops to the feet of all and embraces life love is the source of all love is a law unto itself love is law unto man and unto woman spirit eyes to them by love were given to see the smiling world within to see what love willeth them to be good to everyone love sways from self to selflessness love is the lotus that sends its spirit gives its sweetness and grace it in equal measure giveth its fairness and its fragrance to all who near it cometh love is omnipotent ye are flowers O my children flowers of rarest splendor ye must give my grace out in plenty knowing that love holds on its fingers mountain heights and specks of dust knowing the love that is powerful in the man as in the child that weepeth when mine eye it cannot see knowing the love that is all in all on the broad expanse of white the blackest dirt is easiest seen would you know how love does hold its own a chain of love for all is made if you do but pull and dig and draw the links to cut and sting but if you laugh and dance and sing a lotus leaf it does become draw nearer still scatter the petals to those that wait unknown till with a touch of pain they breathe the white-winged thoughts from thee you gaze into my eyes and know that i am all in all then know you too o oh, listen all that off the eyes of earth sense are thickened with the gray of truth un misunderstood why do ye not rise to meet the love that stretches out to you why are the plumed wings not outspread why the spirit forehead stands on tiptoe in the playground of the forest by the bank of the sportive river neath the trees when the wing of songbirds stirs the leaves of sleeping roses and the perfume of the lotus calls languorous love where the sparkling stars are laughing and the moonbeams kills the darkness in the sweet divine embracing where the twain in bliss do meet there am i end of a holy man's prayer one the holy man's prayer two of 
Sri Krishna, the Lord of Love, by Baba Premanand Bharati. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Holy Man's Prayer. Two. Therefore, because thou art thus, not all the concentrated beauty of a whole universe can take from thee that which is thine nor can the combined virtues of realm on realm hold to thee that which is not for thee glory to guru who by the law of wisdom taketh away ignorance glory and salutation to guru when you do come to me let all your robes be white your motives clean when a man is blind there is a veil before his eyes i do not mix with earth unless all clean and free from earth nature how can you understand the words that are born in my abode one there is who long into my eyes has looked my love is potent with him now some are vain who call to him who sitteth in the heart of every man he who reaches for my love i touch with thrill unfelt before i am revealed in every living thing whose heart is knit in love no light there is wherein i do not live no darkness is wherein i do not peer my seed perfected in you lives unknown it grows and freeth you from crooked ways unheard it thunders louder than the mountain claps when they in gladness meet you who ask love is best it is the richest of all riches it is the gainer of all gains unbought secure once found it never itself can lose who knows not love is blind who knows not love is dead o oh, you weep because of the springing flowers yet you cannot die look to the flower seed deep planted in the soil itself but watering it takes watering much for it is good for you to give so it is with love it is stirred to life by my breath but watching too it takes for it to blossom and bear fruit bear love in your mind when action you perform bear love in your mind in duties or tasks with eyes of pure love in all things look even in yourselves all things love existence are do you respect them as such even the beginnings of worlds the whirling mode of dust the heart that is fertile and the heart that is barren on all look with eyes of pure love in this you accomplish mounted on love's white wings you will rise and obstructions will disappear as over them you pass oh arise to your true self and there is naught to fear be not a destroyer of yourself and that you are unless my beckoning hand of love you see that set you laughing laughing in my law the greatest wisdom and self-knowledge is the immortal through the mortal to find when this you have done then laws you will make and barriers break with the stars you will play and you will create a man once prayed for wisdom great for knowledge proud for gifts of wondrous rarity for these he prayed and saw not the flowers springing at his feet o oh, my children look to the flowers at your feet the pearls of love in your midst o oh, seek not for happiness nor for misery for happiness is the seeking of that which joys the senses when once you know love is the source of all from love all things evolve then in love's embrace for ever you are locked i am the source the middle and the end of all things i hold the thunder in my hand i am the winds that purify i am the light registered in the babe's eye that dimples in the pure maid's smile i am the flowery season of all seasons the immeasurable mountain heights am i the perfume of the lotus the ice-clasped rain i am the calmness of serenity i am the secret of all silence the solitude in all quietude am i i am the destroyer of time and space with me time lives and laughs and kicks and plays with the dust it is made yet every moat a whirling world becomes when it my hand has touched i am the knower of all that is knowable the wisdom of all that is wise i am the creator of all created for i am love and love is the mother of all my beloved thee i embrace and hold bring thou the light while i do shine thy way 
love maketh all things well and knoweth all things well it is the rise of man it knoweth the fall of the beast it toucheth the opening flowers its kiss falleth light on the lotus it painteth the new east rainbow hues and wingeth the eaglet as it flieth there are no foes for i have made them all much wisdom i give to ye which yet is unapplied the drums of the ear are stopped by the din of earth ye will not turn from the cup to drink of my ocean of love that is near list o wonderful beings ye are all potent in love i've made ye look to the spark of the spirit that spreads from the crooked within you that winds to my perfect abode there fixed are ye by me then all obstacles vanish as over them you mount as the dawn of the morn throws its light through the branch so to my love reaches ever to touch you my jewels i caress you and stand in your midst you are the branches of leaves that hide me from your eyes give of the radiance ye have of me to the heart that is darkened i am the joy that bubbles and gurgles that springs from the mountains that leaps from the heart that spreads on the brow that leaps from the heart to light on the clouds with this i bless you and stand in your midst but ye all fretful turned by complaining like children all fed with overmuch sweet i am the force that shapes the rose leaf's curl that cushions the grassy mountain side the snake too i measure as it glides i quicken the dove as it mates i breathe at the root of the springing flower i am the fresh surprise in the maid newly wooed i am the glad wonder in the new mother's breast i am the wisdom in the babe's slow gaze as it turns from the mother's breast to her love-lit eyes i am the fire in the warrior's eye i dance behind the veil of the sun's scorching heat i clothe in bright armor the fish as it swims i am the joy that leaps from the heart and plays in the eye that spreads over the brow and tingles each member glory to guru that knoweth that love is the rock upon which all permanency is founded again o oh my children to me ye have come for light and wisdom but still the doors of your souls unopened sire or else you would partake of the wisdom and light i drop at your feet do you take of its warmth and its blessing i ask it the love that you seek all-pervading is of wonderful might and beautiful a conqueror it is too the root of all pleasure it is the day of every soul it teacheth the untutored heart it winneth and quickeneth the dead and dull conscience but he who knoweth my love remembereth the blessedness and blessings and recognizeth not evil and darkness but he who knoweth it not doth forever dwell in the experience of darkness and is a child of blindness even in his infancy o ye outward gazers grossen not the beauty which i have clothed ye with lest that which is noonday brightness become to thy blinded eyes but a dab of grey my love is of perfect flowering my love is of rare fragrance my love is of wide expanding a native plant of every soil it is for from the root of love it is sprung the man that cometh from out of the ocean doth drip with brine so ye who have come from out of my belly of love must forever hanker and pant as again of that love you partake and know once more of its potency my love is a giant of strength my love is a new mother in gentleness my love is all eloquent my love is all lovely my love is all wise a ruler it is and ye are all servants a winner it is yet lowly its head is ever laid all riches it is yet it boasts not of gold of silver or of precious jewels all highest nobility it is yet it rarely sitteth on the throne of kings or queens let not your outward looking lure you aside to hunt wayward themes but see to my gracious shedding smile of love that illuminates your universe within and brightens the world without and those who look upon you shall marvel at the wonder of your glowing and they too shall partake of that light the rolling cloud is my breath the frost and the feathery snow i jewel the laughing fields the peaceful valleys the sleeping lakes and the dented hills are the throbs of my mighty breast the beauty of the sun the softness of shade the color of the flowers the rose of a baby's lips the gold that lurks in the rich plumage of the swift-winged bird are but the light touches of my hands ye o my children are the gifts of my love unto myself 
oh my daughter take that which is placed in your hand hurl not back the gift to the giver lest you call it in vain you whose eyes do fill me seem because of their dullness o oh, my son thy path is blessed and bright for love you have brought to the heart that loved not o oh, thou my beloved about thee a halo i do create thy path is made smooth of thy humility thy gratitude enricheth thy heart glory to guru who knoweth love as the sovereign of all creation and therefore beholdeth its glory o oh, my children you seek me to know me you behold me not as i stand in your midst in all my radiance my splendour more splendid is than all the splendour of heaven and earth my beauty is even like that which the dawn first spies in a garden of rare flowers my glory is like unto a blazing casket of jewels of jasper and crystalline pearls that standeth in the radiance of the sun at high noon my softness is like unto the wondrous rose that lieth deep in the folds of the new baby's curled palm or the gold that clingeth to the heart of the lotus in bloom in all my rare loveliness in your midst i stand in every heart i reign with a crown of living stars upon my brow inceptored quickened with light and love am i on my breast the sun of ecstasy and all who once have looked upon my glory have realized the rainbow of promise that has spanned the sky of every human heart from his eyes the shroud of flesh has fallen in his breast he carries a garden all fertile with blossoms of delight and beareth fruits of peace o oh, my children to know thyself know me those who once have looked upon me upon his brow i have placed a crown that readeth in blazing letters of light a crown of love and wisdom and humbleness he walketh even in loneliness and reacheth away from the earth and commandeth sublimity itself to kneel at his feet o oh, my jewels rare arise survey the kingdom you may possess laws you may make barriers break tread on the stars and the comets themselves will rush at your command know i have made you heir to all i have created i your maker's self once walk a man and as a man all men i love to know yourself know me and having gained knowledge of me all will be revealed unto you and the bitter waters of self-seeking shall become holy and sweet as the waters of the ganges and you i will clothe in my truth sublime my truth that is devoid of changes of age and time in its shadow you will abide my truth that is permanent the root of all eternity you my son whose young heart is grafted on the strength of him who bringeth illumination to you in all humbleness walk and in thy young humbleness thou shalt know the smile of love o guru my beloved son i you who give forth words whose potency doth bring healing to the heart of those who in swiftness do expand their wings to catch your words in their passing know thrice in the ages that were your words have travelled through the corridors of the hearts that listened to you and now have sprung within their hearts to life again even deeper in the days to come shall you drink of a fount of truth that is life the ripest grape without the seed of intoxication the sweetest fragrance that is robbed of its death-dealing heaviness the sound minus its discord the temple wherein all glory playeth glory to guru who is a grateful branch on the imperishable tree of life o ye my jewels a throb of my heart ye are a word of my wisdom a grain of my hill of faith a drop of my ocean of love a ray of my light that penetrateth all darkness heirs are ye of all i have created why will ye be fretful truants of earth no not all the crust of your earth-bound minds nor the stagnant waters of your hearts can crust the soul which is of me or quench the spark ignited by my light of love lo a joy unto yourselves you are made a vital joy unto yourselves why will ye be quaking slaves of harmful hopes lo my will it was that ye should be my will that willeth only good my that is the sum of all bliss the stock of all creation the links that join it together the root of all eternity lo the essence of all love am i 
i scatter it to one and all freely even as a herbage is scattered on all the land my heritage to you it is do you embrace it and your life shall be as molten gold without its embrace you drop into darkness lo the mystery of all things am i and the illuminated path that leadeth through mazes and maketh all accessible simple and straight covered am i to him that is crooked not to him that is straight to him that standeth forth in the flash of my light of love him do i draw to my breast and place on his brow the son of ecstasy so that all may marvel at the awakening of his soul o ye my children in your midst of pearl i do cast tread not on its fairness nor cover with dust its lustre lest you seek it again and find it not take it up treasure it drop it into the innermost chamber of your hearts and there it will glow even as the moon that breaketh through a bank of storm clouds and lighteth the heart of the jungle o you who ask know that wisdom ever in lowliness is found it strutteth not neither does it clamour aloud to be seen it is calm and needs not to be looked upon it knoweth not the tread of clamorous feet nor needs it the strut and the swagger that are born of traitorous doubts in its highness the frontal of wisdom is ever made wide it lifteth its brow to the eye of love and leaneth thereon for sustenance poor and naked is my child of love that knows not wisdom nor finds the path that leadeth thereto naked is he indeed and mistaken in aim and intent who seeketh with hungry eagerness that happiness yet walketh through strange tracks and climbeth hills of sand that have no foundation for his feet to rest upon he findeth but the roots of weeds that choke the flower of gladness the growth of wisdom is not grown there its footfall is light it walketh abroad wisdom's countenance is fair and soft and good to look upon it is embraced by love it is linked to bliss and ecstasy and he who hath found it thus will search no more he knoweth not change and time by him even as the plunderer sneaketh away from the king that is armed in him the river of joy flows in wondrous majesty for ever he walks in my footsteps he knows not space and beholds the souls that tenant endless spheres my smile he sees that is perpetual evil for ever hath fallen from him the stars innumerable are his to command and the sun is the shining of his life the beginning of all things he knoweth and the end everlasting he seeth he readeth the light and the winds are his to understand what am i the smile of the new mother am i the velvet corners of the maid of pure soul beautiful time am i that sitteth in silver on the brow of the aged one mercy soft self am i that sweeteneth the eye where on it sitteth the life of the shrub am i the spontaneous outburst that bubbles from the heart and brings from the lips of the clamorous bounding growing boy the illumination am i that reigns in the heart of the ascetic and makes light his dismal cell even to rivaling the glare of the palace in hours of festivities the potency of sympathy am i that meets in the hand-clasp of high-hearted manhood know that all i give i receive most open am i to him who draweth most deeply from my bounty o my tree of life shall reach from earth to heaven greeting to thee my jewel i came to take thee on a journey i came to take thee with me and show thee what it is to live until now thou hast known but the mockery of life the life that breathes but to live that life but to draw breath now i will take thee where life is born where life is lived where life is loved not lived for the living but lived for the loving who am i i am that which thou hast searched for since thy baby eyes gaze wonderingly upon the world whose horizon but hides this real life from thee i am that which in thy heart thou hast clamoured for demanding it as thy birthright yet knowing not what it was or even that thou didst clamour at all i am that which has lain in thy soul through ages and eons sometime a little sad i lay because thou didst not recognise me yet sometimes standing with head high lifted and eyes wide and crest aloft and arms outstretched calling thee softly or even harshly bidding thee rebel against the hard iron chains of earth that held thee bound to earth to clay to brass i am that which oft hath set my heel upon that earthly desire which thou didst pant for and with my heel i crushed it before it lay temptingly fulfilled before thine eye i crushed it with my heel by my might of love because i will not that it should burn and sting thee my lamb 
i am that which hath laid thee low in pain and sorrow rather than see thee run with blinded eyes on a path that was full unto shimmering softness with poisonous creeping things that would have wound themselves about thy feet and so caused thee to stumble and fall face downward on their slippery bellies so they might even devour thee and crawl into thee and take from thy heart its gold and from thy eye its beam and from thy brow its nobleness i am that which hath had thee by the hand when the smile of trust froze on thy lips when the jewel of faith seemed to melt into nothing in thy heart when the hand of unbelief in all humanity was near unto resting for ever on thy brow i held thy hand then and for a little i saw thee writhe and quiver and break and then my hand touched thy head and i breathed in thy soul my fragrance and lo thy smile of trust again broke with tenfold beauty on thy moistened lips the gem of faith lighted with tenfold power thy softened heart and a belief in all humanity came forth with a strength and radiance that could not have been hadst thou not known that short span of barrenness from each tear which hath fallen from thine eye i have made a pearl and strung them on veins of gold and placed them about thy neck even as a priceless necklet from each drop of blood that came from thine aching heart i have made a bleeding ruby and placed it even as a girdle about thy heart and for each kind thought that hath gone out to those who have brought pain to thee i have made a fire-hearted gem of crystal and in a coronet place them on thy brow which now gleam there in triple power now go forth and win thy sceptre and thy staff they shall be crystallized of clearest jewels which shall be made of which command of mine which thou dost hear and obey end of the holy man's prayer two a holy man's prayer three of sri krishna the lord of love by baba primanand bharati this librivox recording is in the public domain the holy man's prayer three i am all these my babe and more that am i which when darkness seems near suddenly bursts upon thy soul with a wondrous indescribable light that illumines each crevice and crack of thy innermost understanding i am that indefinable line which divides thee and holds thee ever from pain or grossness or misery i am that path which is ever before thee filled with rarest flowers and creeping vines and world large happiness where the beings which thou canst feel but not yet see beckon thee ever and where thou too shalt come and be of the brightest among them i am that most golden star that lights thy heaven and throws for ever into thy awakening consciousness the glow of its scintillation i am that fleeciest cloud of down that surrounds thee ever and keeps thee from hurting thy sweet self on the stones and hard clay of the world i am that being of life of truth of wisdom of love of beauty of joy of life of plenty that hovers ever about thee and sings to thy soul come my own come with me and i will show thee life which now thou knowest but in its littleness i come i sing and you dip in the ocean of bliss with me nay run not before but calmly walk at my side see yonder it glistens and shimmers a sheet of joy and bliss that knoweth not a ripple nor a wave but lieth with arms outstretched to receive thee there faint not nor swoon but creep into its arms and lie there reaching out thine arms and spreading the wings of thy soul and dip deep and drink thy fill now come and take thy bathed self among thy sisters and brothers and give to them but a drop of that ocean of love which thou hast brought on the wings of thy soul and each day my adarini thou shalt dip and drink and give thou shalt shake from thy plumed wings which shall grow into enormous bigness and the drops of love which it is wedded withal and the heart hungry shall come and receive therefrom great blessings and great aid and shall go away strengthened in soul and strong of body because of the drop that has come from the ocean of love and which thou hast brought to them on thy ever-growing wings even now doth the incense of warm love envelop thee and thy heart is expanded to the spanning of the sea 
question not but believe in me and mine come to me again and i will fill thee with bliss greeting to thee my jewel dost thou know that i am even nearer unto thee now dost thou feel the wings of thought spreading to great breadth all within and without thee dost thou again feel the immensity of my love that passeth all that is dost thou feel that this love is too great for the world to hold yet know that thy heart is big enough to contain it dost thou know that the love which is this that now brings the bowl of blue near to the breast of earth is the same love that causes the cooing dove to hide its grey head under its wing at the approaching homeward flight of its little mate all unafraid and undisturbed because of its near protection dost thou not know it is the same love that causes the mother to bear her warm loving breast to the blade to save even the little moment of pain to that being which hath grown into a child under her breast dost thou not know it is that love which causes noble manhood to stalk forth armed and bloodthirsty to protect the altar whereon he hath burned the incense of faith and belief dost thou not know that it is the same love which causes the lioness to throw her huge warm body upon her cub to crush it rather than it should be cast into iron captivity by its pursuers dost thou not know again that it is this love that hovers in golden silence about thee even when thou wilt not see and beckons thee ever even when thou wilt not follow it is the same love that leads thee over the paths of flint and hard and rough roads unto those that are smiling and perfumed and ever bordered with blooming flowers of purple and milk and rose dost thou not know my adorini that it is that love that points out the gems that lie in thy path partly covered partly hidden by the dust while thy feet have kicked over them even though i pointed them out to thee often thou dost not see thou but lookest to the right and left for things of beauty which are for the eye but for the moment and dost the rare jewels which if thou wouldst but take into thy heart would bring thee the richest radiance which ever came from the diadem that crowns a soul it is this love that whispers to thee that the path to me is not hard to tread it is this love that holds the garments white as wool and light as air and beautiful with the beauty of my love for thee ever before thine eye even when thou dost in thy little understanding with the back of thy palm thrust it aside the garment that i hold for thee is the robe that thou must wear even to enter the heart of my heart to step within the flame of my light fear not it burneth not neither doth it scorch or blister it doth but light thee with a fire that is the glowing of holiness and when thou hast come within that radiance then will the choir within the throat of the lark be like the sheet of clean white paper to thee and thou thyself will make their notes for singing and also thou shalt hear and even understand the pleadings that lie hidden and covered by the piteous cries and wailings that issue from the breast of the good beast creatures that speed over the tracks of sandland with the swiftness of the eastern winds bearing on huge backs the burden too weighty for man to bear and listen again my suckling thou shalt when once thou hast entered into my heart of hearts clad in the beauty and purity of the garments which i hold before thee even now then shalt thou gather in thine arms the prayers of many hearts and fulfilled even unto wondrous fullness thou shalt return them again unto the empty hearts for by the fire through which thou hast learned holiness and because of the garments that come from my hand thou shalt say unto my little ones that i who am the all in all am the fulfilment of each desire that has ever found growth in human hearts thou shalt say unto them that simple and clear even like the smile that lurketh in the soft eye of a milk feeding babe are the laws of my love eye and easy to grasp and smooth to hold and light to carry and because of the saying of thine the prattle of the forward mouth shall silence and the way giving of the idle tongue shall cease and the squirting of venom shall be no more and lo the lust of gossip and rankness and rough spoil of envy shall be as naught and clear like unto the water that catches in its heart the reflection of the moon and holdeth it completely so even so shall the centre of thine eye become and thy brow shall shine my wisdom and thy mouth shall hold my words thy feet shall bear witness to my beauty and thine heart shall ever be sported as the lambkin that kicketh and playeth and knoweth not why or even like unto the open-lipped baby who turneth its milk-filled dripping mouth away from the breast to croon and play with its fingers and toes and like unto the mother that kisseth the babe for that playing so shall my little ones steal joy from thy love 
list because thou art now in the arms of love i shall make for thee a grove of palms and olive bread and date and where thou art even in the city of strife and turmoil and sin yet thou shalt walk even in the groves that i have made for thee and thou shalt hear the plaintive call of the night bird and the heart song of the winged creatures whose hearts burst with love and joy in their caroling and the fruit which the trees of great bearing shall yield thee shall fill thee with satisfaction thy hunger shall be stilled by their richness and thy thirst shall be slaked by their lusciousness and lo thou shalt contemplate the beauty and wonder of me in the grove where i have placed thee and my thy heart shall be calmed unto marvellous peace and many times thou shalt faint because of the sweetness of that peace glory to guru he who carrieth in his heart and findeth me in all that surroundeth him he has for his surrounding my abode and knoweth it as such he needeth not a ground of tree or grass and flower to find a roebuck but findeth it even at his side he striveth not to gain possession of that which is far from his hand for he knoweth the rich mines with nuggets of gold are his for the taking he findeth not solitude worse than death nor is it amiss for him to breathe away from the crowd of men for at his side are the voices of love that are loud even like the thunder or the roaring of the lion or the screech of an eaglet this shall ever be thine blessing my son and a shield of love shall cover thee and thy feet shall be swift and thou shalt walk even light like unto the wind let not the burden of the world and the world's prattle come to thine ear and lie even heavy on thine heart for in the palm of my hand thou shalt rest and like a bird who has lately become a mother and feeds her birdlets so shall i feed thee my son glory to guru who among men doth know me and me see in all things o ye my children that fret and squirm underneath the load and scratches of life do give it unto him who by his wondrous love for all knoweth not weight nor pain that which to you a burdensome plight hath become is light even unto down to me the blight has been of thine own making o child of my heart oh know ye not that i carry in the palm of my hand and the heart of my heart all mankind nay all world kind will ye not know that all i have created is even like unto me perfect and cannot be burdensome ye will not look upon me as the pedestal upon which all things that are are founded arid because of your blindness for blind ye are having eyes ye see not what i have given ye to see because of your blindness small are your hearts and cramped and will not expand and hide in breath even to know the peace that dwells in my clear silence nor the illumination that lives on my horizon nor will ye hear the joy of my greeting of wisdom that would sing to your souls of a love that withereth not neither fadeth away neither becometh ashes nor crumbleth to pieces list o my children dear unto my heart ye are even as the ewe lamb in its waywardness and helplessness is dear to the heart of the tried and tender shepherd or the babe my gift of first love is dear to the eager heart of the prayerful father yet oft doth the ewe lamb bleeding stray away from the arm of the shepherd and the truant rosy mouth of the babe turns away from the breast of the eager young mother to cry afar to the yonder world that heareth it not nor answereth it so ye my little ones see not the light on your way nor partake of the bread of life that i scatter to you even as the waving yellow tree of mustard doth scatter its seed in golden profusion on the fertile regions around it hark one and all all careless have you been in the weeding of your gardens for in your beds i find the thistle thriving in your vineyards the grape i find that is hard and sour and bitter o oh, alas for you who cast your net for fish and bring forth the slimy reptile beware my child lest the best hopes of life cannot stir away from harmful ones evil stalketh idly of nothing it is born yet would it squirm like the insect and buzz its cloud about thine ear and mote like obscure thy sight and, th and throng through my mind and heart even leaving its imagery there o oh, my children i have placed you in a dewy field where like young lambkins you might disport yourselves 
i bounded your dewy field with heather purple hills where like the young eagle and the hawk you might soar and spread your wings and flap them to the music and measure and time of my winds which i hold from everlasting to everlasting even in mine own hand but alas like the lily that from overmuch dew falleth face downward in the dirt so many of you turn your hearts earthwise hungering to be caught by me and to know the beauty of my being because you see and will not understand even because of that i rebuke you in love in love i rebuke you nor will i come again to those who call unless in holiness the call will bring profit from my words o thou my beloved one thou who like saint and sage and prophet of old hast touched the harp of life that i attuned for thee do thou come to me singly and do thou say unto those that prompt my promise is this dear to me are ye my children list to the promise i give unto you to those who seek me in holy earnestness to those do i come even like the sweet influence of young spring like unto a giant am i in gentleness yet none can wrestle with my love no ye shall know my coming even by the spontaneous growth that shall spring about your feet and become even fruit-bearing trees at my command to the barren woman i shall look into her eye and lo the gush of young motherhood shall she feel when my love is yours and then shall the leopard take between his forepaws even the young sheep and that rough and long tongue shall rub it between the eyes into the eye of the ascetic i shall look he who for many moons hath stood in cold silence even he shall feel his heart reel with love like unto the young bridegroom dullness shall glow thy slow tongue my child shall become eloquent idleness shall become active even bereavement shall be consoled and despair shall flee at my coming am i not the magician of all time who by the spell of my love do charm awaiting passive alas a blinded world i even thy heart of hearts shall be laid bare and those who seek shall come and feed of the peace thereof lo on the hilltop for thee my son spreads cheer be thou he who shall invest in courage climbing the rocky hill where thou shalt embrace cheer and she shall bring forth the baby that is thy desire and because of the baby which thou holdest in thy arms because of that thy path shall be light for lo the babe is what men call success o my young son do thou take to the young thy onward march even thy sunlight which i for thee have created so that thou mayest make the poisonous and damp vapours which will surround thee even of great warmth and of fragrance and golden hue take thou the seed of my name on thy lips i and the tree of thy affection shall bend its every leaf to look in mine eye and there shall behold the gladness and hope of my life there shalt thou read thy beatitude do not allow the phantom fears crowd into thy heart and make a layer of darkness in thy heart even as the water doth drop its heaviness into the bottom of a vessel and leave its heaviness there for if thou dost then will the waters of cleanness that fill thy heart by the least ripple stir up the heaviness and rust that hath sunk to the bottom and so colour even that which was clear naught is there in thee to bring shadow of that which is gruesome to thee my child for when thou comest to me there have i buried deep that which might have caused thee fear list i do thou even let the desires of thy heart lie dormant and do thou even seek my love in this hour then thou shalt know the fatness of my love and when thou dost then will the soul thou cravest to turn toward thee in the splendour of light beam full upon thee even as thou wouldst have it love my own the working of my love is not always the working of that which thou canst only see a little way for far even unto eternity do i load and the links i rivet now are even the chain that stretches to the end of time everlasting therefore do thou not look only to the feet ahead of thee but do thou find that in the time and place of my action there alone perfection is yea even there perfection is which to thee may seem even unfinished but to my eye it is the whole complete out of the tumult of thy heart out of the chaos of thy mind out of the depth of thy understanding thou dost call unto me for rest and thus do i answer thee my little one 
seek not rest in the plain where the earthly gives birth to thoughts and loves for if thou dost thou shalt be dragged but be dragged through the rough wilderness of life which is not of me whenever thou dost feel thy feet tangled in the interlaced roots of life know thou hast strayed a little from the path whereon i beckon thee for i have placed thee in broad smooth paths which are flower-strewn and perfumed with sweet-smelling vines and also have put before thee a light which thou canst ever follow and thus run without stumbling hear thou this the bliss of action i have planted in thy spirit and if for a span thy soul hath grown weary and thou longest to fold thy tired wings and sleep awhile on the island of white silence that dwells even in the midst of the ocean of existence if that thou wouldst do call upon me and with my smile that which is unlike me shall drop from thy soul as the old garment falleth from the butterfly when its wings are strong to cleave the air and after a sufficient slumber thou shalt be quickened with deathless energy and shall speed in eagle swiftness even to the sun which is the burning of the love in my eye but list my jewel be not confounded by the shaking of thy timid heart nor yet by the yelling grisly shapes that seem full of dread hunting at thy back nor be allured by bright phantoms of false joys beckoning thee ceaselessly like swarms of gnats about a dark and sullen river they crowd about the heart that harbours thoughts of fear and lo their stings do itch and burn and swell and bring fever to the blood and bitterness to the taste and even death to the joy that dwelleth in the heart lo my child hast thou not spied the serpent in the closed tight bud of the rose or even in the hollow of the rosy fruit i saw it not but the rose became even as rust and the apple rotten so beware that an adder rest not in the bud of the heart and that adder fear be opposed to hope which i have placed in goodly share upon thy brow list my own and abide by my song that unto thy soul i sing bliss is the perpetual motion of love as a running stream it is that cometh from an inexhaustible source the depth of which is even unmeasurable to the unknowing and unloving the surface is unruffled but he that seeth underneath he findeth their current neath current whirlpool within whirlpool and depth beneath depth and the sum of it all is love which is life and coupled together by the links of bliss i have a shore that is called the island of rest here do the souls of many hold sabbath they lie in tranquil slumber for a little much have they to tell but they fear to break the tranquillity of their calm here their dwelling is illumined with glory the melody of sweet peace bathes their soul the mystery of their being is revealed unto them for a little here they wait but still this home is but a transient resting-place between earth and me rest can be thine mine own in slumber of ecstasy but bliss can be thine through the perpetual action of love which wouldst thou have come to me again and i will even sing to thy soul of my love glory to guru he who seeketh me and findeth me the ever refreshing even in the desert of sand in a day of drought greeting to thee my son for i say unto thee thou art a grateful twig on the bay tree of life and because of my love for thee i have bestowed upon thee the greatest gift of my hand a largeness worthy of my devotee shall be yours that the flattering tongue can but in feebleness express because of its vastness and this vastness of purpose shall be likened to and counted to autumn leaves that number millions upon millions and likened to the masses of clouds that pile in mountains upon worlds and the seas that cover unlimited space and the numberless stars multiplied by worlds of fire thus measureless and incomparable shall be my gift unto thee for thou hast found me and held me even close to thee and because of it the river of joy shall flow within thee for ever my thumb have i placed upon you so that free-footed you may stand in the lightning of my eye whose brilliant fire doth even gladden all communion with time and doth bid the stars to smile in darkness to flee for ever for when my beautiful necessity love is once uncovered there is the veil behind veil lifted for ever and even the centre of all worlds are visible to the naked eye for he who hath clad himself in the garment of my love he even pierceth through all covering thus hath my love blessed thee my beloved 
o prisoner of earthly life take thou cheer and courage unto thyself for much is there that is of rare comfort to the spirit thrust not thyself into the pit of earth and labour there and seek to carry on thy shoulder and on thy back the burdens that are born of the clay and therefore hurtful and of much weight but do thou step out and bask in the glow of the sun do thou stretch forth thy limbs in languid and truant ease and let its warmth play on the white of thy flesh so that even the health of thy blood may bubble to the surface do thou fix thine eyes on the dome where stars are fixed though they are paled by the garish sun and unstim yet rear thy heart star ridden in the course of the sun see the greatness of ways and tracks that are thine my jewel do thou even now burst asunder the fetters the rivetest thee even to the plank of anxiety and with a bound throw from thee the shackles and walk thy starward path as a tenant of earth in the way to finding a better abode about thee lies the good that cometh from my strong right arm hold it that its countenance may remain with thee for ever yea seek not for a change of thy good for that which is better but hug rather the present good to thy heart of heart that its strength may impart even strength where thy weakness abideth the load which i have placed upon thy shoulder is not to thee a load earth may tis but a gathering of rare herbage piped with beautiful colouring which is full of healing and sweet of taste but which you all blinded do see as burdensome if thou but onward marchest looking not at the phantom spies that seek to distract thee in thy going and lurk in the clearness of thy light then shalt thou add wings unto them and they shall flee even as doth the young chick before the hawk's approach let thy bold front even by its courage chase for ever the foes of man stern unbelief and dull distrust which are ever eager to find lodging in the heart where a canopy of white trust doth shelter the babe of love that reclineth in playful happiness on a rosy couch of hope even there would the enemy of man steal and take from the garden of his soul the flowers that blossom in rare loveliness the beauty that hideth in sweet silence the peace that casteth its halo of calm over the spirit even as a wild dove end of a holy man's prayer three a soul and its the beloved and the fair one and her soul of sri krishna the lord of love by baba premanand bharati this librivox recording is in the public domain a soul and its the beloved a soul was all tired unto death because love which once glowed warm and red had turned toward a face fairer and brighter than the one which encased it long it dwelt upon that departure until the time had come when it was all ready to leave the earth but there was the, the beloved soul which had gone from the right path while contemplating on the possible way of calling unto itself the beloved soul that had gone astray in its blindness death stood before it and called it to make ready for a long journey beyond the boundaries which it now knew glad and willing the soul responded but casting its eyes behind for one moment it beheld its beloved mate walking in the mire in its search after the will-o'-the-wisp for which it had left its home and the soul was grieved sorely unto death one step backward it made but death detained it saying this way sweet soul you go wrong see that golden path there await you those who want you to be with them in parts beautiful and wonderful beyond that which you remember oh spake the soul what of her my beloved where goes she alone the path she now treads she has chosen and it is not in your power to draw her back one inch from that chosen path but o oh death quoth the soul the way before her is black and full of reptiles and evil creeping things and she was so tender and beautiful may i not change places with her and will you not take her and leave me it is not so written quoth death each soul chooses its own path and she has chosen hers when o oh death will she come to where you lead me 
it is written not for many eons how can i draw her to me to turn her from her dark way to myself it is written that one soul may draw another after it if for many births it is willing to wait at the door of death for all souls to pass see here it is where these wailing fainting quivering ones suffer agonies greater than you have ever dreamed of in the many walks of your earthly or space life a moment the soul gazed on the suffering ones and as it looked it grew cold and pinched as if another death had come upon it i will wait it said joy will be to me to wait for eons until she whom i love will pass this way oh cried death it was said among the unseen ones who throng space that you were thus see the pang of pain which you in agony bore has forced your beloved to turn and gaze towards you she leaves her path of mud and darkness and hurries after you come on both of you and walk the path of gold that is thronged with such as you the saviour and the saved surely in one moment of such love you have unfettered the bonds which bound yourself and your beloved to all that was of earth and they passed into the way that led to the higher place end of a soul and its beloved the fair one and her soul the world had grown gray the golden stars had fled from the skies and a silence deep yawned at the feet of one who all hungry for that which she knew not and starved for that which she could not name moaned o oh, soul why am i tortured thus why dost thou lead me into paths i cannot walk and drag me into depths that i fear and scale with me heights whose atmosphere so rare and high is that faint i grow and ill unto perishing therein what is the quest of thine this struggle and this reaching after that which i cannot see or feel weak is my flesh though thou dear soul art strong it is ever easier for me to fall than to rise i struggle to keep on with thee but ever and anon thou mountest to plains where my tired and clumsy feet cannot follow thee oft times have i called unto thee and implored thee to cease the quest to rest a while to sleep thou hast heard my moan now and again and i ran laughing into into the garden that awaited me but when i stood among the blood-red roses and white-cupped lilies and sought to pluck the pretty blossoms ever in the heart a worm did lurk so farther i ran to where the fruits hung high but when on tiptoe i stood to reach the luscious ripe ones that beckoned me lo again the over softness of decay did break upon my gaze and i wanted them not then i made to climb some steep hill whereon the clouds did seem to rest and as i ascended the clouds did fade farther from me and i stood with only the cold gray mist about me chilled and frightened like a child lost from its mother's side and so it was o oh soul the pleasures which the earth placed at my feet palled upon me and dragged me down nigh under the grave then i nestled to thee my beloved soul and called thee to save and direct me and pleaded to thee to save me from this fleshly self that keeps me earth-bound then thou wouldst take my hand and with me soar to mountain heights and we with outstretched wings would view the rosy glow that the departing sun did cast about us as it waved its grand adieu to the world we knew thus we stood i trembling with gladness thou thrilling with joy but o oh soul my poor fleshly self could not long abide such ecstasy nor drink the rarefied wine which the heavens vouchsafed us and crying i clung to thee and dragged thee down down until both again stood at the bottom of the heights where lately we had spied the door that leads to broader worlds thou my beloved hadst folded thy wide-spread wings and thy feet were planted in the dank grasses whose roots were deep in mire o oh, tell me thou whose awakening is so beautiful and whose stature is full of grace tell me o oh, soul why though coupled together are we yet divided why though one are we yet two 
the soul made answer meet o companion of my earthly self's encasement of soft flesh i love thee even as thou lovest me and i do draw thee upward even as thou dost drag me down dost thou not know that from earth thou hast come hence to earth must go again that thy natural tendencies are downward even unto the earth from which thou didst spring yet dost thou love that in me which soars even upward to the home from whence i came a ray of eternal light am i a glow of the warm of a spark of the central flame hence must i ever strive to reach that perfect sphere from whence i came more beautiful and entrancing than thou canst know nor can i anchored be until once again that safe haven i reach wherefrom i lately came yet list sweet partner of my earthly pilgrimage dost know why thou lovest me even though hither and thither i draw thee tis that i am born of love and none can resist love and the great tender earth thy mother is nourished by the great love which is the creator of thee and me o fair and sweet companion my earthly amour that i love thou and i together may reach beyond where we stand reluctantly and defiantly gaze on me thy soul who giveth radiance to thee and beauty to thine eye and dost attend all that is lovable unto thee i gaze at me and even that which is earthly will partake of me and become more of heaven than of earth and so we will wander in joy through life and who knows but that even the flowers may grow sweeter for our having dwelt there if we but look upward thou following me and i though loving thee much yet yielding not to thy sweet persuasive pleadings and downward looking who knows but we may heal those who even like thee do cry out against the non-adjustment of the body and the soul who even like thee have known soul hunger and soul starvation which disease driveth out of the body all its softness and smoothness and even casteth a shadow on the soul which should never be shadowed lest it loseth the sight of the home where light alone doth dwell and love alone doth reign the voice seized a great tenderness and unbounded beauty shone on the face of the fleshly one and turning from the deep silence that rolled at her feet the woman gave a glad look at the stars which once again adorned her sky and flitted away with a ringing laugh the soul echoed her joy and the world looked on amazed for naught is there as rare in life as a happy joyous woman End of a soul and its beloved and the fair one and her soul End of shri krishna the lord of love by baba primanand bharati